Hey everyone, I uh, just want to make a few brief comments um, about uh, Michael Jackson. I just watched uh, ABC special on him and, uh, you know, to be honest, I hadn't really thought about him in a while. And um, but uh, and I'll say this ahead of time, I don't have anything negative to say about Michael Jackson. Um, there is one there is one thing I don't understand, but it's, it's, it has nothing to do with with being negative toward him, or just, it's just something I don't understand, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. But, uh, I was going to check and see when Michael Jackson was born before I did this, but I just wanted to go ahead and do it. Um, but we're pretty, we were born pretty close to the same year. I was born in 1956, so I think we were born within uh, just a couple of years of each other. And I remember when I was about 13 and the Jackson 5 were... Um, coming out with their, you know, ABC and and uh, their their other hits, uh, you know, man, we all sang along to them, you know. We didn't give a damn about it, race or any that stupid stuff like that, you know. He um, was just so entertaining. His voice was just um, he he was flawless, man. I mean, he he sounded real good. And just listening to his voice made me happy, you know, and just really was a happy sounding voice. And then um, later on, uh, as I grew up, you know, I got into other music. I got away from the pop scene, and uh, so I wasn't listening to Michael Jackson that much. But um, in uh, 1979, I was in uh, Eugene, Oregon. And I was just right, touring the country by rail, hopping freights. And um, I was uh, working here and there, and, but I'd sell plasma. And I was in the plasma center at the uh, University of Oregon campus. And um, the, a song came, a Michael Jackson song played on the radio that they had playing uh, over the intercom system, PA system. And it was... Uh, I want to rock with you, whatever that song was, rock with you all night, I dance the night away, whatever it was, and uh, I loved it, I was like, wow, that's, that's freaking good, man, that's a good tune, again, it was happy sounding, and you know, the beat was infectious, and, and all that, and his voice, man, it just, he had a voice, I don't know that there could be anybody anywhere that wouldn't like it, you know, that would not like his voice. And I mean really like it, you know. Kind of like a child likes to hear his mother humming in the kitchen. Um, but, you know, he, um, according to this ABC report, you know, he, uh, I, this I didn't know about uh, toward the end of his life, he was really getting into some financial problems. And, you know, behind the scenes, I don't know what kind of drug drug use that he was involved in, but he was doing things. They said one, um, uh, he was going to a dermatologist that injected him with Demerol. <laughs> like, wow, what do you go to a dermatologist for that for? But, um, so, I mean, it was obvious it was, you know, sort of a shady kind of thing. And he injected him 50 times over three months. And then um, he, uh, of course, hired Dr. Murray, or someone hired Dr. Murray for him, and he was administering, I think it's propranol, something like that, some sort of anesthetic, uh, which was eventually killed him. But, and like I said, this is going to be brief. You know, with regard to all the child abuse ac accusations, I don't believe any of them, you know, because... Uh, the uh, media has so publicized this sex offender phenomenon, they make it seem like every, every sex offense is against a child. And that's just not true. And so when someone is, a, you know, it, it conditioned the media to be really hateful toward child molesters. So when you make that accusation uh, about somebody, and he, more so if they're in a prominent position, you know, teacher, preacher, doctor, whatever, and celebrity, mega superstar, it hurts. It hurt him. It had to hurt him. Uh, they showed a clip where he said, uh, 
that um, he was never going back to Never Neverland. Never going back to Neverland. And um, he said it's because it's a house now. It's no longer a home. And um, it, very sad. And um, so he um, he had to live with that. And um, you know what? What a terrible thing, man. And I know he left the country for a while. I think he went to Saudi Arabia or Dubai, somewhere over there. And um, again, the accusations were coming out, at least what I heard from people. Oh, he went over there because so he could buy boy, little boys. I thought, my God, people, get the fuck off of it, man. God damn. And um, so... I, uh, I have nothing but praise for Michael Jackson. I'm a uh, wannabe songwriter and musician, and you know I, I, I have been influenced by his work. And now, having watched this special, I'm probably gonna get on uh, YouTube and, and watch a lot of his videos and see if I can borrow <laughs> some things from him. Not dance moves, but. Uh, you know, just musical techniques and voice techniques and stuff like that because he was a master. He was a master. And could the guy dance? Could Michael Jackson dance? Come on. Who who made the moonwalk popular around the world? All right. But anyway, Michael, uh, rest in peace, brother. But I, I did say there was one thing I don't understand. Please, please, I'm not being negative about this at all. I just I just really don't understand it, and I've never had, gotten an explanation as to why. And that is Michael's uh, seem, seeming obsession with his appearance, um, particularly his skin pigment. And I, I wondered, you know, the guy was, he was really good looking, as he was. I mean, he was, was a handsome guy. And um, I thought to myself, what, what's in his mind that he feels like he wants to lighten his skin? I mean, I don't believe for a second that he had anything against black people or, 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 or um, being black. I, I don't, I don't believe that for a second. But still, you know, just why, why did he do that? You know, and if anyone is watching this has a comment about that 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 could help me understand, I would appreciate it. And then with all the uh, cosmetic surgery, you know, he began to look. Um, he didn't. It wasn't looking that good, man. You know, his nose was really funny looking, and he had this big crease. His chin was too far out, and oh man. And, uh, anyway, and uh, before I go, uh, one of the videos clips I showed, I got a kick out of. It was talking about how Michael he would spin like crazy, and they showed him he was. It said they were in Las Vegas in a casino, and I guess they had a gift shop or something. He was going through there, I want that, and I want that, and I want this, and I want that. <laughs> and at one point, one of the entourage said, you, Mike, you don't have room for all that. Yes, I do. And uh, so, anyway, he, he was just one uh, hell, hell of a guy. And um, I know a lot of us are, miss him, and we'll always re remember him. And so, anyway, uh, God bless Michael. God bless all of you. And... Uh, I will see you next time. I want to. I would like to discuss. This got me thinking about the um, artists and musicians that have passed away recently. I'll miss some. I apologize. But in my mind, I'm thinking of Prince, um, uh, Lane Staley with Alice in Chains. That's been several years back, though. And um, Scott Weiland with um, Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, Chris Cornell, with, uh, he was late, most notably with Soundgarden, but uh, later on with Audio Slave. And, uh, and then, of course, the historics, you know, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Janis Joplin. Um, I'll miss a bunch of them, I'm sorry. But um, anyway, I, I, I'm going to do a lot of research, and I hope to, to create a video that's... that's um, very informative and, and insightful on those things because that's my world um music and musicians and artists uh, the, the, those are the people i identify with and um so i have a, just a great deal of respect and admiration for those people and i want to get 
deeper into it and find out what I can and just make a nice video. So, I right, guess, um, take it easy. Bye.